What happened to you that made you believe in ghosts? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. It was an 80 degree summer's evening in Southern California. I was watching Wayne's World for the 11,000th time on her couch, hoping to break out of the dreaded friend zone. I figured my odds were better than average that night. Her roommate was out of town and she had invited me over for an evening movie, not a help me lift something heavy or rearrange furniture evening. We were well into the movie, she was sitting intimately close to me, giggling at Michael Myers and his antics. The night was progressing well. Thanks to Mike doing most of the heavy lifting for me, she was receptive and didn't even writhe at my antiquated attempt at the good old arm stretch around her shoulders. Just as my maneuver was successfully completed, there was a loud crash behind us. She loved the macabre. The house was decorated with the bizarre and unusual. Posted at the front doorway was a mannequin dressed in gold hot pants holding a spear gun. His name was Rocky, as in the picture show and she said he was an excellent judge of character. Apparently Rocky wasn't a fan of my attempt to get fresh with his woman and dropped the spear gun, causing it to fire and lodge the spear into a wall. Wow, that has never happened. She apologized profusely, he's usually not the jealous type. We giggled and tried to proceed as if an attempt on my life had not just been made by an inanimate object. I wasn't a superstitious person in any way back then. Honestly, the first thought through my mind was how irresponsible it was to have a loaded spear gun precariously sitting in the hands of a mannequin, but I was really horny and believed to be close to closing the deal. I clumsily tripped across first base right around the time Rob Lowe showed up. I naively thought his smoldering good looks would aid my attempt to warm up the second baseman for a quick run around towards third, when out of the corner of my eye, I saw a tall dark figure run from one bedroom to the other down the hallway. Is your roommate home early? I asked. Nope, he and his girlfriend are in Vegas for the weekend, why? I explained to her what I had seen. She assured me that no one was around and I was seeing things. I resumed the movie and went back to attempting my seventh inning stretch. I could clearly hear someone rustling around in one of the back rooms, so a feeling of dread now replaced some of my more tingly feelings. She could now sense I was distracted and waved off my attempt at third base. There's nobody back there, my roommate's gone and the other room is empty. She was visibly frustrated now. Go back and take a look if you're so concerned. The steam had left the boiler room at this point, so no further harm could be done by allaying my fears and taking a look. Did I mention she was into the macabre? The walk down the hallway was akin to walking through a maze of horrors. This didn't help my growing sense of dread or doom. I sprung open the bedroom door as if I were expecting to surprise a masked burglar or mischievous teenaged intruder. All I found was a vacant room. I walked in to check the closet and suddenly got a cold chill. It was as if the room had instantly dropped 20 degrees. That feeling of dread turned into a feeling of panic. As masculine as possible, I suppressed the panic and exited across the hall to a roommate's room. Once again, no one. I closed both doors and began making my way back up the hallway when I had an overwhelming feeling of someone following right behind me. I picked up the pace and began briskly power walking. I passed a gas wall heater on my way and it eerily began creaking and ticking like they do when rapidly cooling after shutting off. The power walk was now a power run. Right out the front door, past Rocky and out to my truck. A few minutes later, she came out and asked what was going on. I explained what had happened and she nonchalantly responded with, oh, that's the ghost, don't worry about him, he's harmless. This happened just last night. We bought a 120-year-old house that had been totally renovated right next door to where my husband had been born and raised. We have lived here for seven years. In our back bedroom, you get a horrible feeling that I can't stand, but my husband isn't bothered by it, he made it his man cave. It is cold in their winter and summer. Well, I was in the bathtub next door to this room. My little cat was sitting there with me. All of a sudden, her back arched and her ears flattened and she hissed. I thought oh no someone broke in. I got out of the tub and put on my robe and went out. It's a fairly long haul and so help me I saw a woman dressed like in the 30s walking down the hall. My cat went running the other way. I grabbed hold of my cross that I always wear, and all of a sudden, I wasn't scared anymore. The demon turned around and I yelled at it in God's name to leave this house. She just disappeared, the smell was horrible. I called my priest immediately, even though it was 11pm. He told me the demon had probably been attached to the house for decades. 
He told me that to continue to wear my cross and try to get my husband to wear his. He is coming over Sunday to bless each room with holy water. Until then, I will not go to the back side of the house and I wonder why my husband isn't bothered by it. I don't know that I'd call what I've experienced ghosts. The term ghost somewhat implies a remainder or remnant of someone, almost like an echo. I feel that what I've seen were actual people, just composed of a different form of matter than what we'd call living people. Let me tell you the story, we moved into the house we currently live in three years ago. Seven years ago, we lost our oldest daughter and I am now a firm believer that deep and prolonged grieving generates a kind of altered state of consciousness, that can thin the veil allowing us to see and experience things that are otherwise not perceptible. It's important that people understand that before we lost our daughter, my husband and I were diehard skeptics. Neither of us had ever had any kind of experience that could be called paranormal or supernatural. We were both logical, practical people who required solid evidence on which to base our opinions and make our decisions. Before we lost our daughter, this kind of thing just wasn't possible. After everything we'd seen and experienced, our eyes were opened. We sold our previous house and rented this house we currently live in three years ago in preparation for our retirement later this year. This house was built in 1955 and the old couple who built it are both deceased. Even though this house is 65 years old, the only people who have lived here are that old couple and us. The husband passed away many years ago in his 50s. The wife lived into her 90s, but she'd moved in with her daughter down the street and the house had been empty for 10 years. The elderly lady actually passed away only 4 months before we moved in. After about a week, we'd gotten moved in and my husband had gone back to work, I started to notice dark shapes and movement in my peripheral vision. Sometimes I'd turn my head quickly and just get a glimpse of a dark shadow or shape. I'd see the shadows move past a door or a window, sometimes they'd just be stationary until I'd turn my head to look directly and it would quickly fade out. I was sitting on the patio once visiting with a neighbor and there was the shadow person out the corner of my eye, leaning over the short iron fence around the backyard, arms crossed and propped on the fence, as though he was just listening to our conversation. I could even detect that he was wearing a fedora type hat, cocked a little to the side. I never, not once, had a bad feeling about these shadows. In fact, it was quite the opposite. I felt like I had a kind of caretaker about the place. I got the distinct, gut feeling that it was the husband who died many years ago and that he'd been here, shadowing the place, for a long time. I hadn't told anyone except my husband. My son's girlfriend didn't yet know what I'd seen and had recommended that I burn sage in the house to fill it with positive energy set a good tone for our time here. I had never heard of this practice and didn't understand how or why it worked, but I bought a sage stick and about two weeks after we'd moved in, I smudged the house, every room. I was shocked to realize that my shadow friend never appeared again. It was easy to notice, he'd been around all day every day until I'd burned that sage. I looked it up on the net and realized that sage is used to clear spirits. I was horrified and felt like I'd forcibly evicted this man's spirit from his own home, I can't tell you the guilt that I felt. I didn't tell my son's girlfriend what had happened until just recently because I didn't want her to feel bad. But she actually relieved my mind about the whole thing when I did reveal to her what I'd seen, and what had happened with the sage incident. She suggested that maybe I'd released him from the house. She said deceased people often get stuck in places or around people that are important to them and they need help to move on to where they should be, I hope this is true. I've never seen anything like this before or since, but having had this experience in this house, I have no fear whatsoever now of seeing such things in the future. It was actually a beautiful and kind of thrilling thing. I feel like I got a glimpse of something that very few people will ever see. I'm very thankful for it. My father-in-law passed in 2008. About two months ago, I was sitting alone on the couch when I briefly saw half a torso of a man. There wasn't a head, only from the shoulder to just below the knee. The sighting lasted long enough for me to see it. It wad wearing a long sleeve plaid shirt and khaki pants. When I told my oldest child, she responded with, oh my gosh mom, papa wore plaid shirts all the time. Her grandpa died in 2008 and his son and I were in the process of moving long distance. I believe he was checking in. There have been other instances that compelled me to believe more than I already had. We stayed in a and b in Nashville, Indiana at a place called Story Inn. A well-liked woman who loved the color blue, nicknamed the Blue Lady and her husband resided there. He had been the local doctor and had his office on the second floor where the both of them lived. When we first got to our room, I sat down on the bed in the Blue Lady room. 
I smelled rubbing alcohol. My husband could not smell it, however I could. There was no denying the smell. The smell left as quickly as it came. Later that night, my husband told me to watch the flashlight. He asked, "Is there anyone here? If there is, turn this flashlight on." It came on immediately. To make sure it was not just low on its battery, he asked, "If you are still in the room, can you make the light come on 3 times?" It did. Then he asked them to do it again, only faster. Sure enough, the light flashed very quickly 3 times. Neither myself or my husband were touching it or anything else in the room. There are many more instances, but I do not want to make this too long. Yes, I believe in ghosts, heavenly spirits, and the afterlife. No one can or ever will change my mind. Decades ago, I and my then husband were spending the weekend with my in-laws. We were in our 30s. The first morning when we woke up, my ex said, "Last night, a very strong scent of flowers came through the bedroom." I think it was Granny, his grandmother who had died several years previously. He continued, "I didn't want to wake you, but if it happens again tonight, do you want me to wake you up?" I thought about it and first said no, but then changed it to yes. So night 2 came upon us and I was sound asleep. My ex says, "Sapphire, wake up. Can you smell that?" And I swear to God and all that's holy a strong scent of some sort of rose petals or body powder filled the bedroom. It lingered, my ex says, Go away granny, which I wish he hadn't said and it went away pretty fast. It didn't scare me one bit, I thought it was lovely and miraculous. I have known since then, and since a second scenario like this one, that there is some sort of afterlife. I know nothing about it, I just know there is one. Mine was when I was a small child. I used to talk to this little girl that nobody else could see for years as a child. My grandmother and aunts always said she was my imaginary friend. to which she would always look sad about when she'd start crying i'd get mad at them for upsetting her which usually led to my being beaten for being disrespectful eventually i had a dream when i was 8 that i saw her standing in a shaft of bright light and she hugged me and thanked me for being her friend all these years but it was time to go see her mama i want to point out that her form had never changed dark long hair brown eyes olive skin she looked hispanic but lighter tone than i had thought at the time she should have been Sometimes growing up is a good thing. A few years after she left, I had to do a history project where we researched the property we lived on, and guess who had died on the grounds and never been found? The girl's father had been a raging alcoholic in the 60s and both the girl and her mother had gone missing. The father had been convicted when he finally confessed, but told them they could choose to find the baby or the wife. Eventually, he chose for them and told them where his wife was buried, some 60 miles away. He knew not telling the rest of the family where the child was buried would destroy them and he laughed when the cops told him they wanted the little girl's location. The thing is, I knew the girl had been there, but how was I supposed to go to the cops? When I showed my grandmother the results, she asked me what I thought. All I told her was Stacy, my imaginary friend, and she went white as a ghost. We never spoke about it after, but that's when I learned that ghosts exist and sometimes we're allowed to see them. I've only seen one other ghost in my life. my grandmother's after she passed and nothing since i used to be a major skeptic and put ghosts in the same category as goblins elves and woodland fairies however in the last few years several incidents have taken place that has made me change my mind completely however the one that was perhaps the most effective in my change of heart was the following my wife and i lived in a small town in conservative northern south dakota To get our mail or to send something in the mail, we had to go downtown to the local post office. The mail was picked up from there around 3:30 p.m. and one Thursday afternoon, I had an important letter to send off, so I walked downtown, hurrying to get there before the mail went out. As I approached the street corner directly opposite the post office, I suddenly became lightheaded and had a strange feeling that I like to refer to as an out-of-body feeling. I shook it off and noticed that there were no cars on Main Street nor were there any in the parking lot next to the post office. I crossed the street and approached the glass door on the corner of the building housing the post office. This led into an L-shaped room with one leg of the L going toward the left, and I was right at the angle where the bottom of the L extended around the corner and ran away from my location. Just as I was about to enter the post office, I saw a large man, probably 6 feet or more and roughly 250 pounds wearing a dark blue and red plaid long-sleeved shirt and dark trousers held up by suspenders. 
but he did not appear to be a Hutterite who live in our area and dress somewhat similarly. He went from left to right going around the corner, and while he crossed in front of the door, he looked at me. I remember his face very well, but I had no idea who he was. In a town of that size, you get to know everybody in town, and I had lived there for about 49 years, so I knew just about everybody. I wondered who he was since he did not appear to be a resident of the town and there were no cars available on the street for him to have arrived in, so I looked around the corner to say hi. When I looked, however, there was no one there. Now the area he walked into had two walls lined with mailboxes, and the third wall was an outside wall and only had one small window high up on the wall. There were no doors, not even to closets, and there was absolutely nowhere for him to go to leave the room except return back towards me, but there was no one there, not a soul. At his closest to me, he was about 5 feet from me and was as real and solid looking as anybody can be. I do know that the site where the post office was located had been where there was a cream buying station years ago, and I feel that he somehow was associated with that. Oddly enough, at first I was reluctant to say anything to anybody as I feared they might think I was crazy. But in fact, as time went by, I began to tell one person here and another one there until I now talk about it quite freely and I have not had one person laugh at me or ask what I had been smoking. In one case, I was telling a former minister about what I had seen, and he looked at me quite seriously and said, Rich, you will notice that I am not laughing. He went on to say that one time, while he was sitting in the living room of the parsonage where he was living he heard a noise and looked up to see a little girl approximately 6 to 8 years of age standing in the next room and looking at him through the doorway. She smiled shyly and then turned and walked into still another room. He got up and checked, but there was no one in the room that she had entered and he was alone in the house at the time. I get reactions like that quite often, and I think there are a lot more people out there that have had experiences who, as I had been, afraid to say anything for fear of being ridiculed. When they encounter somebody else who has had a similar experience, they are more comfortable about opening up and telling about their experience. I have also noticed that people who scoff at the idea are people who have never had any experience that they would think of as paranormal. I have. On the other hand, talked with several who were at one time skeptics like me, but who had some kind of an unexplainable experience and now are either less skeptical or are actually believers. I have always believed in ghosts because I could always see, hear and feel the unseen. I also had a mother whose maternal line were Hungarian gypsy and she herself had the gift and she wasn't shy about sharing some of her experiences with me. I had some scary encounters with demonic energies as a teenager, which made me turn back to the Catholic Church and get rid of all of my Edgar Cayce books. So what had me reconnecting with my gift was an encounter I had over the course of my wedding night in the evening, following at the hotel in which we were staying in New Haven, Connecticut, before we jetted off to Acapulco for our honeymoon. I awoke both nights at exactly 4.13 by the digital clock on the nightstand and saw, standing at the foot of my bed, an older woman dressed in a red suit, circa 1960, Jackie Onassis style. She was blonde, beautifully coiffed and made up, with long red fingernails, a bit of mutton dressed as lamb, and she glowed. I could see straight through her to the mirror over the dresser where I could also see the back of her, a bit disorienting, and I could see my breath in the dim light of the bathroom night light we had left on. The first night she appeared fairly friendly, crooking her finger at me in the universal sign of come with me. Yeah, that so wasn't happening. I was completely paralyzed, so not sure how I could have followed her even if I had wanted to. I started praying the invocations of my Catholic childhood, the Hail Mary and Our Father, and my paralysis broke, at which point I pulled the blankets over my head and continued to pray, cringing as I waited for a touch on my foot or worse, the blanket being ripped from my fingers. By the way, my new husband slept the sleep of the semi-innocent, never moving. It happened again the following night, except she was not the least bit friendly. Her hand was fiercely waving at me to get up and follow her, I suppose into the mirror. However, I knew all about the magic of mirrors at this point and had no intention of becoming a statistic. I again pulled the blanket over my head and prayed and as before, she disappeared. Morning came each time and I completely forgot about my nocturnal encounters. The memory didn't arise until my husband and I were entertaining friends and started telling stories about various ghostly encounters we had had in the past. I remembered my wedding night ghost and told the story, making our friends laugh about it being a bad omen for the viability of our marriage. Unfortunately, eight years later, we did split up, but I doubt it had anything to do with the ghost in the hotel room.
I wasn't even five years old yet when I temporarily shared a bedroom with my six-year-old brother. We had bunk beds at my grandparents' home while our home was renovated. I woke up in the middle of night on the top bunk because I was cold from not having any blankets on. When I turned and leaned down to grab my blanket, I saw a very peaceful middle-aged woman just standing in the middle of the room, about five feet away, it was a tiny room, looking at me. Not creepily staring so much as just watching. I was too scared to yell or scream, and the only thing I could think to do was grab whatever blanket I could reach to pull over me, even as adults, we all know blankets can save us. All I could reach was a baby blanket I still slept with, which wasn't big enough to cover me unless I rolled up into a ball. Even though she was still standing there when I pierced back again, I tried convincing myself it must be fake and I was dreaming, or if something bad was going to happen it would've already. The next thing I remember is waking up in the morning, and all I had on me was my baby blanket. I assure you I never slept with that blanket on me, I used it that night out of sheer desperation to cover myself quickly. That's when I remembered everything and realized it was absolutely real, and I was so happy the sun was up. I assumed my parents would think it was a dream or not know what to do, so I never said anything until many years later when I was an adult in my mid-twenties. Just the fact I can still remember every detail of the woman and that night kind of freaks me out now, because it was 35 years ago and now I get how rare it was. My mom told me I described her grandma perfectly, none of us met her because she died when my grandma was very young. From her height, to the color, length, and texture of her hair, and skin tone. All very different than mine, because I look like my dad's family. Yep, I believe, like it or not, because I know that happened to me. The first time I actually saw an apparition was 11. I shared a room with my stepsister, we had twin beds her against the wall by the bedroom door, mine against the opposite wall by the window, because I liked fresh air while I slept. From this position, I could see everything, the hallway wall outside the bedroom room door which led to the bathroom. I woke one night, or early morning hours about 2 to 3 am. I didn't know what woke me, but I was alert and started looking around. My eyes were adjusted because the bathroom window illuminated the moon, which light that piece of the hallway I could see. A woman, elderly, white, short, she had grey mostly white hair pulled into a bun at the back of her head. She had a black dress on, the front had little pearl-like white buttons from her collar down the front. Long floor-length dress with petticoats underneath, it had the big part in the back like a big butt. I guess that's the 1800s, she passed the patch of the hallway and went into the bathroom. She didn't look at me, she was looking down, she didn't walk she guided. I only saw the side profile so how I knew about her buttons down the front, I don't know. 